Today, let's read Malachi chapter three. The first two chapters, or the first chapter, God told Israel, "I loved you unconditionally," but Israel didn't listen to God. They despised, or even insulted God. And then chapter two talks about Israel. Breaking the covenant with God, the covenant of Levi with God, and also the covenant between each other, and even divorcing their wives, and God's anger, God became angry and angrier. And so, men have disappointed God more and more. The men have broken the covenant with God and men more and more, and so God's anger has accumulated. And、now, with that background, we come to chapter three, divided into a few paragraphs. First, one, two, five, talking about men breaking covenant, but God restores the covenant, and then. First seven to thirteen, as twelve, a God rob, a man robbing God, and then first thirteen to eighteen talking about we need to change our mindset. First one, see, I will send a messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. God is speaking. Messenger again、uh, is the meaning of Malachi. So God will send a messenger. To prepare the way to change people's heart, so the messenger will carry the anointing to change man's heart. Man cannot keep the covenant. We have no hope by ourselves. Even though our spirit is willing, our flesh is weak. We are doomed to failure. What is the hope? Starting from chapter three, we see the glimpse of light. God said, "I will send my messenger. He himself will do something. That he's going to send his messenger to prepare the way before him, prepare people's heart. The Messiah, the Savior, is going to come. And so, man's heart to turn man's heart to change man's heart." To receive things from God, then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to His temple. That's very important because when the Israelites sinned and God became angry, and actually God's glory had departed from the temple, as written in the book of、uh, Ezekiel. And the glory departed from the eastern gate of the temple and departed from Jerusalem. But suddenly, one day, the Lord will come again to His temple at a time that we do not expect. God will come suddenly. And the messenger of the Kafana will would return to Israel. God said he was going to send his messenger to prepare the way. After Malachi, four hundred years later, John the Baptist came. So even 
man had broken the covenant, the messenger of the covenant would come. As this messenger came to make covenant, what does that mean? Why would God send a messenger of the covenant? Because Israel had already broken all the covenants with God, but God said, I will, I will send a messenger of the covenant, which means I will make a covenant with you again. We know who is the messenger. Jesus, the Messiah. That's why when Jesus came, he made a covenant with us again. We cannot keep the old covenant, and God started a new covenant. So, the, the old covenant actually has not been changed, but just add upon it the new covenant. And the difference between the old and new covenant is that the new covenant has greater power and grace, so we can do、uh, what the Old Testament requires of us. So the New Testament gives us the grace and the power to do that. And so the messenger of the covenant will come quickly. So, verse two: For who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soup. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have men who will bring offerings in righteousness. So who can stand when Jesus comes back? When he reveals himself, who can stand before him? Because he will judge the world when he comes, in front of the judgment seat of Jesus, who can stand? Who has not sinned in the world? No one. So when he comes again, he'll be like a refiner and purifier of silver. The gold must be purified so that it can be. Pure. It must be purified, refined by gold,、uh, by by fire. After the impurities are remo removed, only pure gold is left, and that's what's precious. What's the greatest problem of the Israelites? Their faith. Has impurities, so they、uh, their value is not revealed. The impurities of the Israelites include marrying foreign women, bringing idols into temple, didn't seek God wholeheartedly, didn't give the best offering to God, but the crippled and the lame. Detestable animals to God. So when Jesus comes again, he will purify the Israelites like a refiner, a purifier, and he will also be like a. Like a launderer soap, soap. We purify, wash over the Israelites. In chapter two, we see that the priests and the Levites they didn't fulfill the duty responsibility. They tried to please men, but in the day of the Lord, when the messenger comes, he will purify the Levites. We purify the Levites like gold and silver. And then, but after being purified, then the priest, the people, will bring offerings in righteousness. 
their offerings will be acceptable to the Lord. They will no longer offer what God doesn't like, but what is pleasing to God. So God will resume, restore the covenant with the Levites, resume offering. Coming to the New Testament, we understand God gives us, God wants us to serve Him with truth and spirit that will serve Him, worship Him willingly. We will offer our body as living sacrifice that's pleasing to God. So when John the Baptist comes, he will prepare people's heart to receive the Messiah, Jesus. And verse 4, and the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be acceptable to the Lord as in days gone by. What does it mean to uh, the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem? God will be pleased with the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem. What does it mean? Because when the Messiah comes, he would offer himself, and that is pleasing to God, acceptable to God. As in days gone by, as in former years, what does it refer to? The time is the time that God missed. When was it? The Garden of Eden before man committed sin. God could walk with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And God missed that time. And Jesus comes again to restore everything, and He brings all things in righteousness. Then God can have relationship with God again, like in the former years, in the former days, in the Garden of Eden. Nothing will separate us anymore because the sins will be removed. Because the sin will be removed. So the relationship is restored. From creation, God's will is to live with man. That's all. It's very human. So I will come near to you for judgment. I will be quick to testify against sorcerers, adulterers, and perjurers, against those who defraud laborers of their wages, who oppress the widows and the fatherless, and deprive aliens of justice. But do not fear me, says the Lord Almighty. I've been through the trial of fire, the seat of judgment. People will have to go through that because we need to know our sins and then we can confess our sins and then we can claim the grace and power of Jesus and then we can enter into the presence of God. If we have not been through the process of judgment, we do not know our sin, then we cannot claim the grace and power of Jesus. And so uh, it's important to be aware of our sins. Judgment is important too. 
用語嚟嘅。誒臨近意思咧，其實咧就係誒誒，如果係發言嘅用語上。And、uh, when God said, "I will come near to you for judgment," that's a legal term meaning I am going to bring you to the law court. And the judge will decide what's right or wrong. Before revival, we it's like we pass through the judgment seat. And it's to testify against seven kinds of sins. Sorcerers. What does that mean? Those who do witchcraft, to not regard God as God, idol worshippers. Adulterers is a spiritual adulterers, and also physical adulterers committing sexual sins. Chapter two talks about that, and then perjurers, those who make false vow or false, who for, who swear falsely. It's just doing it for the for people to see. It's not from the heart. So making false or fake vows, and then next is. Those who defraud laborers of their wages, it's being deceitful. We do not love men if we deceit up deceive others. We do not love. Our neighbors as ourselves. That is not pleasing to God. And four is deceive others. Five is oppress the wicked one. The widows and the fatherless deprive the aliens. Just say,、like、if you don't have a proper identity in Hong Kong, you don't have a citizenship here in Hong Kong. Those are the aliens. That, that those are the foreigners who cannot enjoy the benefits of that place, that country. And if you oppress them, that is without love. And God is upset with that. And just like yesterday, chapter two, verse ten, they ask God, "Have we not all one Father? Did not one God create us?" Why do we profane the covenant of our fathers by breaking faith with one another? God values our relationship with others, and we deceive each other. God will be very upset because God made everyone on earth, and we should be like brothers and sisters. If you have、um, Two sons, and the older son always bully the younger one. They're supposed to have every、uh, the same thing. Each one has the same, but then the older brother wants to take what belongs to the younger one. As the father, you'd be very upset too. So when God sees that, that we will oppress the widows and the fatherless, the aliens. People, a、uh, god will be very upset. And number seven is people who do not fear God. No, even no respect to father. If so, if the son does not respect the father, the father will be upset. That means don't treat God as God.
啊、今日喺實喺世上都係一樣。如果你屋企裏邊你嘅小朋友當爸爸好多嘅，完全唔尊重爸爸。If your child does not respect you and regard you as invisible or nothing, then the father will be very upset. 多嘢話是不改變的，所以你們亞各之子們有滅亡。人有啲六宗誒啲，人有啲七宗嘅罪。First six, I, the Lord, do not change. So you, all descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Even though men have these seven kinds of sin, but men are not destroyed. The descendants of Jacob are not destroyed. Men are hopeless, but because God does not change. God keeps the covenant. If God doesn't keep the covenant, the seven sins will lead to Israel destruction. But because God keeps the covenant, but God still keeps the covenant, God doesn't change. So men have hope that our God. If we look carefully at, onto the seven kinds of sins, those are all in our hearts. Anyone has been not been fake before? When you start working in society, people would tell you, you learn that、uh, must be.、Um, Must just treat everyone nicely, but that may not be real, just fake. Or we may, we may want. We are all greedy. Maybe we、we'll、take some papers from the office to take home, or use some stationery from the office to go home to use, or、uh, make copies. For、uh, the son's past paper, or to do something for personal use, make make、uh, some color copies for children. If we do that, that's not honest, because those things don't belong to us. It's just a matter of、um, difference in the. Quantity, but the, actually it's the same thing. The, the quality or, or the essence is the same because God is covenant keeping. So we have hope; otherwise, we all doomed to destruction. So we need to give thanks to God and to claim the. Grace of salvation, and then we can our relationship with God can be restored. Now the second paragraph. Why the Lord do not、uh, the second paragraph from first seven? Ever since the time of your forefathers, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. God says, from the time of your forefathers, which means all mankind have not kept God's law, and so now return to me means now repent. You repent. I will forgive you. What does it mean? In what way should we return? How should we repent? The man asks, "How are we to return? Will man rob God? Yet you rob me," God says. And the man asks, "How do we rob you?" Just like the father. Is saying to the son, "You have robbed me," and then the son saying, "How, how do we rob you?" And God explains in tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, the whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. 
God is telling them, "Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, and there may be food in my house." God says, "The whole nation." Whole nation have robbed me. So curse has come to you. Remember, we mentioned yesterday that covenant includes blessing and curses. A lot of times we forget about the curses. What's the difference? How come I believe in you? What's the difference? After believing in you, you're not. After believing in you, we should prosper, but we actually forget. The covenant mentions clearly. After we start a relationship, with God, if we follow God, obey Him, obey His way, then blessings will come. But if we don't, curses will come. So when they have not kept the tithe things and offerings, curses start to come. They have owned God, but they didn't realize it. And so the Lord Almighty said, "Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it." God should be very angry, but God is still saying, "You can do this. Bring your tithe and offerings, and then you can test me. Put me to test. We should not be able to test God, but God gives them a chance to test Him. That this is the only way we can test God. I give the tithe things, and all, so you can test." If I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out blessing to you, the covenant has mentioned: if we love God, treat God as God, keep His law and ways, God will make us head above the nations. Be ahead and not the tail. It's very simple. God tells us: if you keep the covenant. See if the blessing of the covenant will come to you. Check if you if you love God, you will receive the blessing. God is a God of abundance and love and mercy. He's a almighty God. If you have a good relationship with Him, if you draw close to Him, won't that be very good? Look at our friend circles. Then we know who we are. If our friends are all wealthy, it's hard for you to not to be. It's hard for you to be poor. And if those of you are really excellent with PhD,、uh, likely you are not too dumb. So if we are close with God. We won't be too bad. God said, "Test me. Try to come to the covenant and, and check how real that is. If you love God with all your heart and mind and strength, and then love others as yourselves, do these two commandments and see what your life will become. Your life will be abundant." You see that the floodgates of heaven will pour out blessings onto you, that there will be no room enough for it. So, what does it mean? Love God and love man means we should not be selfish. We don't just consider ourselves. Can we understand and be close to God's heart and others? We do that. Blessings will come to our lives. Verse eleven: I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields will not cast their fruit, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land," said, says the Lord Almighty. 
If you return your heart to God, if you give your money to God, God will give you everything. Like because everything belongs to God, if God would take back everything, even the water and the air, then how can we live? So when God says, "I will prevent pests from devouring your crops," means if you are faithful in terms of the tithes and offerings, God said, "I will protect you. No one can devour you. No one can destroy your fields. God will become your protection." The fields will not cast their fruit, which means you will not start something and end up with nothing. God says, "I will help you. I will protect you. Nations will call you blessed. Your land will be a delightful land, a land of joy and happiness, because you have good relationships." Like everyone is, are your friends, and even God is your friend. And how, how can it be that that we are not happy and abundant? Now, last paragraph, verse thirteen to the end. You have said harsh things against me, says the Lord. Yet you ask, what have we said against you? You have said it is futile. It's futile to serve God. What did we gain by carrying out His requirements and going about like mourners before the Lord Almighty? But now we call the arrogant blessed. Certainly, the evil doers prosper, and even those who challenge God escape. The Israelites says, "How have we opposed God?" Well, actually, they have been complaining. Saying, how should, how, what's the benefit of keeping God's law? Isn't it better to make an alliance with the foreigners like Egypt and、uh, Assyria? Well, may we receive more help today when we think like that too? Isn't it better to watch a movie and buy a happiness than giving tithing and money to God? It's more practical that way. What's the good of serving God, believing in God? It's useless. Only the arrogant are blessed. Those who murder and set fire, they are prosperous. They are they run out of trouble. They they are not troubled. So God said, "You have spoken against me. You have said harsh things against me." But. Then God said, verse sixteen. Then those who fear the Lord talked with each other, and the Lord listened and heard. A scroll of remembrance was written in His presence concerning those who fear the Lord and honored His name. There will be mine, says the Lord Almighty, in the day when I make up my treasured possession. I will spare them, just as in compassion a man spares his son who serves him. And you will again see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. God says. Now today you look at your own with your own eyes. You don't understand who God is. You only think that the evil do is possible. But you need to know that there will be a time, a time of judgment, a time of revival will come. Actually, the revival comes when there is judgment. So when there is the time of judgment, revival comes. Those who fear God will talk to each other. God will listen to them. And then there will be a book of remembrance written in God's presence. If we fear God, there's a book of life. God will write down our names on it. God will record everything on the day of judgment. When the book of life comes, those who Who serve God? 
we belong, we belong to Him. Verse seventeen: in the, de- in the day when I make my up my treasure possession, which means those who fear God will become God's treasured possession. Everything they s- they said, how they love God, will be written on the book of life. How do we? How do they keep the word of God in the times of difficulties? God will record it, and God says He will make them their sons and treasured possession, the good sons and and. That time, you will repent. You will return. God will make a distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. At that time, you will see those who think they prosper actually they are nothing, not even the dust. They will die in the hell. So, Israelites, be wise. Look. With a eternal perspective, because God will judge in the end when He comes, when He rises up. No one can stand before Him when He judges. But if we fear Him, God will open the windows of heaven to pour down blessings upon us. So if we keep on loving God and give Him what. He,、uh, the tithings and offerings. God will bless us. So let God remove our short-sightedness. We need to look and see what is eternal and bring down eternity to now. Then our lives will be pleased by God. Lord, Lord, we praise you. Thank you that we can be close to you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you that you have made the way, Lord, that we can have life. Thank you that we live under the new covenant, Lord. That we live by the power of the Holy Spirit and by your grace that we are saved. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. We lift up your name. Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's, let's sit down. Let's have a seat. This morning, the Lord is showing us that it's important that we need to be aware that He's coming back. He's coming back once again, as He said He will come. He will send a messenger in the past, and He has come two thousand years ago, and He will come again. And He's calling us to be ready and to be clean. He wants us to be free of sin, and He gives us today another chance to reflect about our own life and say, "God, I still have spots. I still have sin. I have not overcome this. Maybe I don't even believe that the Holy Spirit can give me the power to overcome." So let's take a moment and and think. Areas where we're still struggling. Maybe we still worship something else besides God. Maybe we making false vows or even deceive others. Sometimes we maybe oppress, and it's all of our selfishness. But mostly, do we really fear God? We fear God. We know that He's in control and He's the Almighty. He's the one who will judge us, and He loves us. But He will, He will look at our lives. So let's take a moment and reflect, and let the Holy Spirit show us where we still need Him to change us. In His grace, in His power of the Holy Spirit to overcome. Let's take that moment and reflect, and also repent of what the Lord is showing us. So, Holy Spirit, I invite you right now that you shine a light on our lives, Lord. We're not perfect. We still mess up. We still have weakness, and we need you, Lord.
escutes us. Offering. And we 
have not been obedient to him. And you might wonder, why is my life not blessed? Why do things break? Why do I have to spend more money than I, I planned? Maybe the Lord has shown you this morning as we listen, and she has things we need to do, we need to change, and to trust Him, and you should contest Him. Like in verse 10, it says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be the food in my house. Test me in it, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven, and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields will not cast their fruit, says the Lord. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be the light, delightful hand, says the Lord Almighty. The Lord really wants to bless us, so we can test Him. Say, Lord, right now my situation looks like this, but I want to, I, 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 I can test you. So if you have this prompting right now in your heart, that you say, yes, I really feel like I should overcome that fear and make a step of faith and continue to give the time and maybe even an offering. Then I encourage you there, so, uh, for those who are online, make a note, send a note to your spouse or to a friend. I will offer to the Lord. But for those who are here, you maybe uh, you can uh, use the envelope and there uh, is an offering box in the middle and there's also a pen. If you feel the prompting, uh, go there and write down what you want to offer or tithe. The Lord is is here. He says he can test us and he wants to bless us. So take a moment and if you have that prompting from the Lord, and, and there's a moment right now to do it. Or even he says, he shows you something else what you have not done in the past, but he wants you to continue. I promise that maybe made to someone go back to this and continue what you have promised and do what you have promised the Lord I will take care of that person I will spend that time with that person something you have promised so now let's take a moment for those who want to respond to that That's sweet. Verse 16. 
at that time, then those who feared the Lord talked with each other, and the Lord listened and heard. A scroll of remembrance was written in His presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored His name. As close eyes, I want to put that picture into our hearts, into our spirit. This picture, because everyone will love Lord, the Lord and will fear Him. And so, in Jesus' name, I put this picture into everyone's heart and spirit. You see that at that time, when we fear the Lord and talk with each other, talk about His grace and His wonder, as we remember Him. God listens to us. God hears our prayers. God is there with us, listening to us when we speak out loud or pray in our hearts. And there is a scroll of remembrance written in His presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored His name. The angel is there, opening the scroll of、uh, the book of life, and recording all your remembrance and praise of God. It's all recorded in the book of remembrance. The Lord is telling you, my child, I remember you. My child, I remember you. Your name is recorded in heaven, even though you see the wicked prosper, but you have kept your faith, even though they treat you badly or even insult you or bully you. But you have kept your holiness. God says, "I see all this, and I will keep it in the book of life." You love the Lord and every injustice you bear. God says, "I will remember. I will record it, because you love the Lord." Even though it seems not fair, you have taken advantage of others. But God says, "I remember. I have written it into my book of life." The scroll of remembrance. The Lord Almighty says that day you become, you will return to me and make be up my treasured possession. You will become mine. You will return to me as my treasured possession, my child. You will return to me as my treasured possession. God will take you like a treasure to only belong to Him. And God sees you as His treasures, as His pearl, most precious treasure. God says, "I will." Have mercy on you. You become children of God. God's mercy will come to you as He spares His Son. So, Lord, brothers and sisters, receive blessing. In Jesus' name, I bless everyone that their day name will be recorded in the Book of Life. That the Name will be recorded on the book of life. That they will return to God as His treasure possession. In Jesus' name, I put this word into your spirit, so that you know that you're precious. You are special. You are loved by God. God will pour down blessings from heaven, so you can become head and not tail. As you keep the covenant with God, God will make it stand and bless you. 
so that there's no, not enough room to hold his blessings, his peace and joy and love. Abundance will come to you because you are his precious possession. His son, may the Lord bless you, so your heart will be satisfied and then you can be close to God. Hear our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God, our morning devotion will end here. May the Lord bless you.